Okay, so we ended the last video here explaining one form an oligopoly could take, which was a collusive oligopoly that functioned like a monopoly. Today, we're going to take a look at a non-collusive oligopoly where firms are not illegally cooperating with each other. So let's look at the diagram for a non-collusive oligopoly. We first got the cost curves, which is normal. And here comes the weird part, the revenue curves, where the AR curve is all crooked and we have a MR curve that is all chunked up. Overall, this is a funky looking diagram and the good news is you don't need to know how to draw it. This isn't a required diagram on the IB syllabus. I think it used to be. And I'm just using it here to help us understand a non-collusive oligopoly. So the AR curve we have here is what we often call a kinked demand curve. And let's take a look at what that entails. First, taking a look at the left section here, this section of the curve is less steep than the other section. And while we haven't covered it in this channel, a less steep demand curve means it is price elastic, which means people respond well to changes in price, meaning it's actually better to decrease the price of your product because people will be very responsive to it and buy more of it, so overall you earn more money. So at this less steep section of the curve, you actually want to decrease your price and produce more because that'll get you more profit, motivating you to move downwards on this curve. On the contrary, this steeper section of the curve is price inelastic, meaning people are not responsive to changes in price. So it's better if you increase your prices because you're not going to lose very many customers from the change in price and you make more money from increasing price and going up this curve. So considering what you want to do on either sides of the curve, that on the right side of the curve, you want to go up and on the left side here, you want to go down, both because of price elasticity we will naturally end up at this point, which you probably suspected was important from the very beginning. So a non-collusive oligopoly firm would want to produce here. And we like to say that at this point, the prices here are sticky, which basically means prices in an oligopoly are unlikely to change. But why is that? And if you recall the idea of interdependence, that firms were highly competitive and reliant on each other, it makes this easier to understand. That this is almost like a game situation where initially you have some peace, but within this peace, if firm A suddenly chooses to lower their price, now firm A's product is cheaper than everyone else's and some people that used to buy from firm B and C will now switch over to firm A. Obviously, if you're the owner of firm B and C, you are not happy with that. And what can happen is that firm C then decreases their price even more than firm A decreased it. And now firm A and B lose their customers to firm C. And now firm A and B are not happy. And what might happen next? Either firm A or B can decrease their price even further. And this repeated cycle of prices decreasing and then other firms retaliating resulting in a further price decrease is a situation oligopoly firms fear, which we call a price war. What started as an attempt to steal customers from another firm can really hurt everyone in the long run as the prices keep decreasing until firms make less and less profit. So this is a scenario non-collusive oligopoly firms would want to avoid at all costs. 
And this looming risk of a price war is actually what results in the selection of non-price competition in an oligopoly. Price competition is exactly what it sounds like, trying to attract customers by changing the price of the product. Non-price competition are things unrelated to the price. Things like advertising, packaging, how nice the customer service is when you call them, or having a coupon system. All these things unrelated to price. So to summarize, you can say non-collusive oligopolies will engage in non-price competition, such as advertising, because you want to give lots of examples in IB, because of the risk of a price war. And just adding a possible point of evaluation is that these non-price competitions can be wasteful. The money wasn't used to make the product better or make it cheaper for people or anything like that. It was just money spent for the sake of competition without a more fruitful outcome. So that is the end of this video. I'll see you guys in the next video with some content on game theory.